Okay, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do subtractive drawing. Um, we are just going to practice with a little fruit reference. So um, before you start this video, you should have gotten one of these from me. If you have not already, then make sure I get these to you. Um, you may already have your half sheet of white paper. If not, I will be sure to be passing those out to you as you start this video. So for now, you can set the white piece of paper aside if you already have it. Um, and then you also need a ruler and a regular pencil. So make sure you have a ruler, regular pencil, and then your reference photo. If you still need any of those things, pause the video, grab those things, press play, and keep watching. So if at any point I'm going too fast or you need to rewatch something, remember you can always pause the video, rewatch it, go at your own pace, but just don't go too slow because you do still want to end up with a finished drawing by the end of class. So this is what you need to do first. You need to line up your ruler with the, on the edge of the picture, not the paper. So you'll notice that I have a little border on the edge of my picture. Um, yours might be the same as mine, yours might, might be different. So we're lining up our ruler, worrying about the picture, not the paper. So going across the top, zeros on the edge of the picture, and I'm making a mark at every blue dot. This is every half inch. So make a mark there. I've got to press kind of hard because the picture's dark. Make a mark there, 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 and keep going across. So that should have been your last mark is at three and a half. So in, be three, in between three and four, three and a half is your last mark. Now without lifting your ruler, you're gonna just slide it to the bottom. Make sure zero's still lined up with the edge of the picture, not the paper, and make your marks going across. Okay, now just like we did with the animal mashup and um, that grid, we are going to line up our marking lines and go ahead and connect them. And again, you have to push kind of hard. You will be able to see your grid lines in certain lights. So if you can't see them at first, as long as you know you're pushing hard and drawing them, that's just fine. Okay, once you've connected all your marks, um, you can move on to the next step. If you're still doing that, pause the video and then press play when you are done connecting your marks vertically. Next thing we're going to do is line up our ruler on the long the right side this time and zeros on the top of my picture. And again, it's the picture, not the paper. And I'm making a mark at every blue dot again. This time, my last mark is at two and a half. So in between two and three, two and a half. I'll slide my ruler to the left side, do the same thing, zeros at the top of the picture, not the paper, make a mark at every blue dot, last one is in between two and three, two and a half, and then all that's left to do on this grid is to line up my marks with my ruler, drag my pencil across, and connect them. If you're done, let the video keep playing. If you're not done, pause it at this point and then press play when you're done connecting your marks. So you should see all of these little squares. This is our grid that we're gonna work um, from for our practice drawing for subtractive drawing. So if we count, we should end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and kind of a half-ish um, squares going across the top. And then one, two, three, four, five, six squares going top to bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the far right row and so that we only end up with seven going across the top and then we should end up with six going top to the bottom. Okay, so seven across the top, six top to the bottom. We just scribbled out that last row just for our practice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our paper to put the graphite down. So we don't want to grid right away first and you're gonna find out why as we go. So make sure you're following along with this video carefully. Don't think you know what's coming next and start making up your own steps. Make sure you're following 
along with me carefully. So we know we have seven squares going um, lengthwise or widthwise. So that is going to convert to inches because we're taking this half inch grid and making it a one inch grid. We're taking this little picture and making it into a larger picture. What this is called is scaling, scaling our image. That's because we don't want to print um, a large reference photo when it uses this much ink. So we want to print the reference photo smaller, but we can make our finished product a lot bigger, and that's by scaling. So our reference photo was a half inch grid, but our finished drawing is going to be a one inch grid. So on your little half sheet of paper, what you need to do is line up your ruler across the top, make sure zero is on the left edge. You're going to make a mark at the number seven. That's because we know we're going to be seven inches wide on our paper. Make a mark at the top, drag your ruler to the bottom, make a mark at seven again, and then connect those. So this is what you should end up with so far. If you're still trying to do that, pause the video. If you're um, all caught up, you can let it keep playing. Next thing we're gonna check is the height of our paper. Make sure it matches the height of our picture. So our picture is one, two, three, four, five, six squares high. So I'm lining up my ruler and my paper is actually almost exactly six inches high. So we don't have to make a mark top to bottom. So what I want you to do here is put your name in the space um, so that we know whose is whose in case this falls out of your um, clear bag for whatever reason. Now we're ready for the next step. Okay, for this next step, you need a couple more materials. You need um, one of these brown papers or other color papers to protect your table. So if Mrs. Holtry have not, has not already brought that to you, um, then let her know. You need one of those brown papers. You'll put your white paper on top of it. You need a paper towel and then you need a graphite stick. So again, if you're missing any of these things, um, look around, see where they are in the room, or raise your hand and Mrs. Holtry will bring it to you. So what we're going to do next is using your graphite stick. Now remember, you need to hang on to this and you need to keep track of it because you need this for your project as well as this practice. So this will go in your clear bag with your pencil set for, from your value kit. You'll use the edge of your graphite stick, so not the end, but the long edge, and you're going to start filling the paper with this graphite. You will stop at the line you drew, okay? So this is your border line. You're stopping at the line we drew. We don't have to go past that, okay? So fill it up pretty well once, and then grab your paper towel and blend that all together. If you accidentally go over your borderline, that is okay. Just make sure you can still see it. Okay, that's one round. We're gonna do that two more times. So grab your graphite stick again. And pressing kind of hard, we're doing another layer. Okay, grab your paper towel. Again, working in circle motions. Notice I'm kind of shifting my white paper on my brown paper. That's because I'm getting a little bit of a texture from the brown paper. So I, if I keep my white paper in the same spot, then it will keep that texture. And I don't really want that texture. I want it to be nice and flat. So I'm shifting it to, to get that texture gone. So I'm gonna do one more layer, one more round. Just anywhere I see that's a little too light. All right, if your paper is looking about like mine here on this video, you can keep letting the video play. If yours still needs another layer or two, pause it and then press play when yours looks like this, okay? Next thing we're going to do, we need our ruler again. We are going to line up the ruler going across the top, 
zero is on the left side. This time we are going to do a one inch grid, okay? So we're making a mark at every number. For this, you actually want to use your B pencil. So get into your pencil set and grab your B pencil. So pause the video, grab that, and then press play. So you've got your six B pencil, making a mark at every number. And it might be kind of hard to see your grid, but as long as you can roughly see it, you're okay. So I made a mark at the number one, number two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna drag my ruler to the bottom of my paper now, make sure zero's lined up on the left. And make a mark at every number again. Okay, and then drop my ruler down to line up my marks. And again, you might have to like hold it in the light to see where your marks are. Lightly drag your pencil across. You wanna just barely be able to see your grid lines because we want to blend these away at the end. So you'll see why, or hopefully you noticed why we did not do the grid before. And that's because if we did the grid before, we would have blended it away when we covered this all in graphite and we would have had to redo the grid again. So the ground has to go on first. That's what covering the graphite is, is laying the ground. That had to go on first and then our grid goes on top. So we have our grid lines on there um, vertically. Now we need to do the horizontal grid lines. So my ruler's lined up, zero's on the top, making a mark at every number. So this time I'm stopping at the number five. So one, two, three, four, five. Drag my ruler to the left side, make a mark at every number. Stopping at the number five, line up my ruler horizontally, connecting my marks, dragging my pencil across. Again, I wanna draw just dark enough that I could see the grid lines. Okay, so if you're still putting your grid down, pause the video. If your grid is done, you can let the video keep playing and follow along with me to start the drawing. So we're gonna start with the lemon. Now we notice the stem of the lemon touches like this bottom corner of this grid line. So we need to do some counting here. If we start on the right side, we can see this square is one, two, three. It's the third square in. And then from the bottom, it's one, two, three, third square up. So over here, one, two, three, third square in, one, two, three, third square up. So this is the square that matches right there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So right here and right here. Now I'm gonna sketch out that stem as I see it and I'm trying to match my grid lines. Apply everything we've learned about grid drawing the best you can. I forgot to mention, you are still using your B pencil. It's the only one dark enough for you to be able to see it at this point for this sketch. And I'm matching my grid for the left edge of the lemon. It kind of goes in from the corner a little bit. And then it keeps wrapping around and then it goes about halfway between the top and bottom. And keeps going around. Feel free to just watch this part if you want and then do your drawing, or you can watch, pause the video, draw along, watch, pause the video, draw along, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Just make sure you're actually getting the information from this video. So the bottom of the lemon is just a nice little curve that touches the corners, touches the corners, and then it fades out to black. So that's about it. So from here, we're going to grab our eraser from our value kit, and we're gonna start erasing the lightest areas. So say goodbye to your nice, clean eraser, because it's about to no longer be that way. So our highlight is mostly in this square, so I'm gonna start there. I'm going in a little circle motion, working my way out, and I'm pressing really hard in the middle, and then as I work my way out, I'm pressing a little bit less. So it's just like as if we were shading, we're just working in the opposite. We're working light to dark rather than dark to light. So I'm always checking the reference to make sure I'm matching. Trying to get my highlights to look the same. So pretty much I could see it's the left side of the lemon that really stands out and then the right side fades to black for the most part. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm just lightly dragging my eraser across this area to kind of get it to blend out. If you notice your eraser's not working anymore, if it's too filled with graphite, you could go to your scrap area of paper here and just rub your eraser on that a few times and then it'll clean it off. Just like that. And then you have a clean eraser again. Okay, so I've got the basic highlights and shadows of my lemon. Pretty good start here. Um, now what I'm going to do is using my graphite stick still, I'm gonna darken up the background behind the lemon and like where this part fades on the right side. So I'm using more of the, the point side of the graphite stick, so the smaller end rather than the flat side because I really want this dark. And in the video, it's getting shiny, but if I hold it up like this, you could see more of what I'm going for here. Again, if you're trying to draw along with me, feel free to pause the video at any time, rewatch things, do what you need to do to get your drawing to look really well um, done. Okay, the lemon's almost done. All that's left is all this detail feature, so the dots and then like the stem details. I forgot to erase the stem. The stem's pretty much all white. I'm gonna erase that. I'm gonna take my 6B pencil. I'm gonna darken it up around the edges and like where these little creases go. I'm just matching those details that I see. And then I'm now I'm taking my 6B pencil and creating the stippling or the dotting that happens on this reference. So I can match that the best I can. So the lemon's pretty much there. I could spend more time on it, work on details. Um, I could also grab my age pencil and do some more blending out like um, between my dark area and my light area. I'm just gonna use the edge of my age pencil to blend that a little more. But that's pretty good for a practice. Now I'm gonna time lapse me doing the apple, but so the apple is going to be mostly on your own. And when you're done with this picture, I do want you to take a picture and um, submit it to this Canvas assignment so I can see your progress. Even if you don't finish this in class today, you'll take the last five minutes of class to take the picture, show me your progress, let me see what you were able to get finished. Okay, so here is an example of a finished picture. Don't forget to darken the background as much as you can. And like I said, take a picture of it, submit it to this assignment so that I can see what you're able to accomplish today. Remember to keep this little graphite stick with the rest of your value kits. So again, this goes into your clear bag with these two things. Make sure it does get in the clear bag. You do not want to put that graphite stick by itself in your large plastic bag or else it'll get everything covered with graphite. You do not have to keep this. This can be thrown away when you're done. Um, you can put away the brown paper, you can put away your ruler, um, and that's it.